Here's a question. Why does God allow wicked people or the unsaved to live? And you may ask this question. I know this question is coming up with the president of uh, the United States at present. And there's a lot of questions on how he does things and why he does things. And many people don't like him and don't like his ways. And why does God... And you may have a boss. You may have a neighbor. And you may question, say, why does God allow this or that person to live? Why can't we live in a utopia world where everybody's safe and everybody wants to do right? And friend, the first thing about that question before we get to Second Kings 3 is look at your church. Look at the people that are saved in your church. And they do different things. And they get faults. They get problems. And the main reason why, first of all, is all have sinned come short of the glory of God. And then another aspect is all have sinned, including that, that boss, that, that, that politician, whatever, whoever, whatever it is. That person that irritates you, that person you say, why? Is that everybody is a sinner. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That is one aspect. That's what you need to realize. And the thing is, that person, oh, why does God let them live? You need to take that person and put them on your prayer list. Doesn't the Bible say we're to pray for our enemies? So 2 Kings 3.10 And the king of Israel, and every king of Israel is wicked. Not one king of Israel is right. Including this one. And says, Alas, the Lord has called these three kings together to live them into the, land, into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, a right king, said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord? I'm tired of your, your wicked prophets. I'm tired of your false prophet. Is there a, a prophet here of the Lord? That we might inquire the Lord, Jehovah, God, by him. We don't want the devil. I want the Lord. I want Jehovah to speak. And one of the kings of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Sheba, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So Jehoshaphat is of the Lord right. The king of Israel is of the world and of the devil wrong. Okay. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Edom, went down to him, Elijah. And Elijah said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father, uh, Ahab, and the prophets of thy mother, Jezebel. And the king of Israel said, Nay, for the Lord Jehovah has called these three kings together to live them in the hand of Moab. What we're doing is of Jehovah, God. Even though I serve Baal and I serve Asterisk and I serve the moon, the stars and Jupiter and earthworms and, and elephants and, and gugas and dugas and I serve everything. But God has called us to fight against Moab. So you have a wicked king and a good king. And Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look unto thee, nor see thee. So what comes to pass is, in this battle against Moab, Moab loses. Israel and Jehoshaphat Judah win. And you get the aspect with 
Elijah said to the king of Israel, Nor, what are you doing here? Go to your gods. Go to your goddesses. It was not for the very fact of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah that does right. I wouldn't even listen to you. And you say, well, why didn't God just get rid of the king of Israel? Why did God give the king of Israel victory over Moab? I'll tell you why. Because of Jehoshaphat. You know why America's still standing today? And it won't. America will fall. It's not a question if. The question is when America will fall. You know why she hasn't fallen? Because there are Christians that are praying. And the unsaved, like the king of Israel, are winning daily because of the Christians are doing right as the king of Israel won because of Jehoshaphat. Friend, to realize the fact is, there's coming a day, the rapture. The calling away of the saved. The dead and the alive. All those that are saved are going before Jesus to be in his presence forever. The earth, the world, will not have one Christian body. Alive or dead. And then can I say all hell would break loose under the devil, the Antichrist. There will be no Christians. But how does the world get through three and a half years of tribulation, three and a half years of great tribute, such a time that Jesus said has never, ever happened before. How does the world get through that? Because of Israel. God's people. The reason why the unsaved, the wicked are surviving is because of those that are on God's side. Elijah Christians, Israel. That's all. You are the reason. If you a if you are a Bible reading, Bible studying, praying, seeking God, seeking God the Father, seeking God the Son, seeking God the Holy Spirit, you attend the church, or somehow you get biblical instruction. Because there may be no church where you are. And you are praying for your lost family. You are praying for your lost friends, your lost co-workers. Your, whoever you know that are lost, you are praying. And you are going out some form of witnessing. The gospel, not church. The gospel. You are telling somehow that Jesus suffered and died and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you are lost, you're going to hell. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. If you are going out there and somehow you are telling them the biblical truth about the, the eternal life they will face with or without Jesus. You're the reason why things are still journey. And we'll see that in a moment. In fact, I may put one verse at the end. So Matthew. Matthew. Matthew 5. 4. That's not correct. Oh, no. 45. I'm sorry. I I can't write very well. 
I have 45. I got neuropathy and it's just it's in my hands and I I gotta find another way of doing something of writing. All right, Matthew 5:45. That ye may be the children of your father saved, which is in heaven. For he the father maketh the son to rise on the evil and the good. All right. So why do the wicked live? Because God allows them to live. And not only does God allow them to live. Is that light too bright? I apologize. Not only does God allow them to live. He gives them the sunrise. And it's remarkable you think about the sunrise. Do you realize how many people on a Sunday morning will go lay out half naked at a beach, at a park, somewhere for the sun to turn their body brown and red while you go to church? And you say, my God. Why is this happening? I go to church. I read the Bible. I study. I got all these problems. I, oh, that person's not in church. And whether they're sunbathing, whatever they're doing, Sunday morning, mowing the lawn. And their life just seems so, oh, fancy free and wonderful. What's going on? I love the Lord. I try to do right. And I got problems and troubles and tribulations. I even got Christians against me. Lord. Why is there evil people? And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Okay. So. You have an event coming up. You're saved. You're born again. You're going to heaven. You'll be absent from the body. Present with the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. you got something coming up. And, and you. Oh Lord God. No rain please. And that day comes up. That, that moment comes up and it rains. Ruined your plans, didn't it? For the just, it rained. And for the unjust, it rained. Luke. Luke. Chapter 12. 16. He spake a parable on them, saying, A ground of a certain rich man brought forth plenty. And he thought with himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. He said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns. I will build greater. Then I will bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So thou hast much goods laid for many years. Take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. There's that expression. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. That Then who shall things be which thou hast provided? Okay? It rained on your parade. It didn't rain on this man's parade. Unjust, rich man. Now, I'm not saying rich men are, are unjust. There are saved rich men. J.C. Penney was one. It rained on his crops. And his barns were full. And on your day, your parade, it rained. It ruined your time. 
On the just it rained, and on the unjust it rained. And this guy got fruit. He filled his barns for a supply and demand. So you can go to the grocery store, and you can buy whatever supply this guy had. This guy would not have what you needed if it didn't rain. And it may provide rain for him and rain for you. And it ruins your day. And it, wow, look at me, I'm going to get all kinds of money. And he'll die and go to hell, and you'll die and go to heaven or be raptured. Or you'll be able to go into the grocery store, or go into the, to the hardware store, or go wherever you need to go shopping and get your carriage, and you can fill your carriage with, with the grocery list you have because God had it rain on the unjust. You know why God has the evil, the wicked live? A supply and demand. You know why the evil and wicked win? Because they got a man of God, Jehoshaphat, in with them. A company may survive and be wealthy in the bank accounts and supply and demand. And you may say, well, my company's wicked. My boss is wicked. The CEOs are wicked. But you're sitting there saying, Lord, I got to pay my bills. Lord, I got this payment coming. Lord, I need the money. I need the check. And God says, okay, I'll answer that. Your evil and wicked company will make money. They will fill their barns and probably go to hell that you on your payday can get your paycheck. Do you realize if you were to take every absolute Beyond a shadow of a doubt, save Christian. They are going to heaven. And they're going to they labor. You may not have enough for a supply and demand of all the people. God uses. The, the unsaved for the saved. And God uses the saved for the unsaved. Together, though one be a child of God and one be the child of Satan, we have a supply and demand. We have a victory or a defeat in wars and battles. You may have a company or an outfit in a foreign land. And they may be as wicked. They may be whoremongers. They may be gamblers. They may be cussing. They may be unfaithful to their family. And they have one man in the barracks. He's a Christian. He reads his Bible. He prays. They make fun of him. Whatever it is. He's the, he's the clean one of the crew. He's the, the spotless one of the crew. Though all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And they go into battle. And they come out successful. Maybe even against all odds. And they might have survived because of that one Christian. And it may be to the fact is, if it wasn't for that Christian, they might all have been dead. America's going to start seeing pretty soon the tables are going to be turned. Because many Christians are giving up. Many churches have closed. Many Christians have gone off to heaven. I got here my Bible. This is the Bible I went to, to 
Institute, Bible Institute, I became a doctor of theology. I got I got in here prayers of people. I got their names in here. And I have another Bible I use. Another, I got two Schofield Bibles. This one's associated with my wife, Lisa, who died. I got two Schofield Bibles, and there are names on pages of prayer. Many of those people are in heaven already. And I got to cross their names out. The president of the institute that I went to, Greg Eastep, Dr. Greg Eastep, he's in heaven. I learned one of my instructors went to heaven. But there are few. I mean, I've always heard, and I don't know if you heard this, but growing up, you know, one of these days, California's gonna is gonna go off into the ocean, and Nevada is gonna be sea, you know, sea coast. What's keeping California intact? Praying Christians. Think of all the wicked and lost people in California. And think about the minute population that are praying. Keeping California where it is. I live in Florida. We get hurricanes and all that. And we've got hit. Listen, those two hurricanes that came last year, I heard churches were destroyed. Pastors' homes were destroyed. Christians' homes were destroyed. And still, there are homes today saved and lost. There have not been, there's still suffering from those two hurricanes that came through. Yet here is Florida. There are people alive. They may have lost their house, but they're still alive. Why? Somebody's praying. You're even if you are a Christian or not a Christian, do you realize take yesterday, May first, two thousand twenty-three. Saved or lost. How many times could you have died? But the prayers of a parent, a grandparent, a spouse, a child, a co-worker, a boss, a pastor, a church member, a neighbor, is praying for you, saved or lost, and you were kept alive because of God. And someone's prayers. Do you realize that you could have survived yesterday because someone prayed for you? Do you realize your boss could be still living because you prayed for a paycheck? Well, let's say, or let's say that mean, nasty boss. Let's say he dies or moves to it, whatever, and he's out of that position of your company, and somebody else comes in. Let's say that guy destroys your company, and you're laid off. You lose your job because that mean, wicked, nasty, uptight, wicked boss. Moved on or died. I don't know. I don't have the answers. But I know it's God. And the very fact is. God uses the unsaved. To provide Luke 12. So I can go to the grocery store. And buy. Because God has it to rain on the just 
and the unjust. God has the sun to come upon the good and evil. Can God not have the sun come on the evil? Yeah, he did that to, in, in Exodus in Egypt. He said the children of Israel had light and the children of Egypt had no light. All right, if Egypt would have had light, excuse me, if Egypt would have been dark, For a month, for two months, three months, six months, for a year, Egypt would not have ever produced the fruit and the crops for others to have. Well, if, if China and, and Russia, they're such communistic countries, and they're just so mean and nasty, yeah, but you know how much of, of their... Imported goods into America you enjoy? America is so mean and wicked and vile and, 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 and sinner. Yeah, but you know how many exports we do to other countries that they might survive? You know, one of the exports that America Christians are doing is we're trying to print Bibles and languages in other nations so they can have a Bible in their language, the King James Authorized Version. Matthew 13. Don't be so quick to oh, get rid of them, Lord. You may not like if God got rid of them. Aren't you glad sometimes God answers our prayers? No, I'm not answering it. But Lord, this boss, he's, he's terrible. Lord, my neighbors are... Yeah, but you know what? God has a reason. God has a purpose. 1325, but while men slept, the enemy came. This is the devil. And so terrors among the wheat. Terrors are the unsaved. The wheat are those of God and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, there appeared on tares also. Tares have no fruit. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not thou sow good seed into me? Aren't there good people that we can have the sunlight come on? From whence are the tares? The evil people. Lord, didn't you put just people? And they are unjust. And he said unto him, The enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou that we go and gather them up? Kill them, God. Can't we kill them? Can't we get rid of them? Can't we destroy them? Can't we move them out to another country? But he said, Nay. At least while you gather up the tares, he root up all of the wheat with them. See, you get rid of the wicked, the tares. You get rid of the evil. You get rid of the unjust. You will also get rid of the wheat. Now, America is heading to a famine of the loss of food. America, when I grew up as a child, there was a store for everything. There was a toy store. There was a hardware store. There was a shoe store. I even remember Grandpa taking me to the butcher. When, when we wanted meat, Grandpa or, or my mom would go to the butcher. We would go up to the butcher, and then she'd say, listen, we, we, we want ground beef. He would ground the beef in front of him. Grandpa would say, we want some pork chop. He would chop the meat. I remember that. You would have a place where you bought tires for your car. You would have a place that... Uh, for food, you would have another place for fruits and vegetables. You had a restaurant just for hamburger. You had a restaurant just for chicken. You had a restaurant, pizza and grinders. You had a laundromat. And then today, 
you know, all your food, all your toys, all your shoes, all your stuff is in one store. And you go into that store in 2023, and the other day, uh, my, my daughter needed shoes, and I needed shoes. And we went to the shoe department, and what used to be full of shoes, very lacking. We went to go look some, for some stuff for, for supper, and we went to that part of the shelves, and lacking. I used to work in a grocery store. I used to be a grocery assistant before I, I became injured with neuropathy. And I was stocked shelves. And you had, uh, I don't know how many different brands and flavoring of spaghetti sauce. Now you go to the store, you only got a selected few. You don't have much to choose from for salad dressing. You may be even lucky enough to go to the store and find what you need. That's coming short. And God says, if I get rid of the, the, the enemy, if I get rid of the tares, the unjust, the wicked, you'll also get rid of the wheat. Because you may lose your paycheck. You may not be able to get the green peppers you need. You get you get in a fight with your wife, you want to make up, and you want to get her some flowers, you go, to, there is no flowers. All right, I'll go, I'll get, maybe there's no more candy. You go, hey, you know what? Mom's had a hard day. My daughter had a hard day at work. She wasn't feeling well. I said, let's get me, let's get something neat. You may say, all right, let's give mom a break. We'll order pizza. And you call up the phone number for the pizza place to order the pizza, and you get this number's out of service. Well, that's weird. So you get in the car, you drive in there, you're going to do the old-fashioned, you're going to walk up the counter and say, I want this pizza, and they want that pizza, my wife wants this pizza. And you go up to the place, and you look. It's out of business. It's closed. You go into the store. You go into the place you're doing. And you got your little basket. You don't have a shopping kit. You got a little basket. And you go up to it. And there's one cashier. Because the seven others don't want to work. Nobody wants to work. Nobody wants to work today in America. Saved and unsaved. Let both grow together in the harvest. God said, all right, why does a wicked, why? Why doesn't God, God says, let them both grow together. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather together first the tares and bind them with the bundles to burn them. Hell. And gather the wheat in my barn. God says, listen, in the end, We'll divide them. There's coming a time, I said, for the church. God's going to call all that are saved. If you're not saved, God ain't calling you up. You don't go to the clouds, and you don't go before Jesus, and you don't go to heaven. You stay here. And boy, you in trouble. There's coming a day that God will separate his Christian, his saved, from the unsaved. And then the unsaved will have no one praying for him. Hopefully, the unsaved will have no more faithful workers. I know there are, there are saved Christians that are not faithful. They call out just as much. They go to the water just as much. They fool around just as much. But there are some Christians out there, they are faithful to their job. They are, they're, they're the ones that are picked on. They're the ones that are respected. And they're gone. And then the wicked, the unsaved, the unjust, the evil. 
If they don't get saved, we'll end up in a place called hell, then into a place called the lake of fire forever. And when they stand at the great white throne judgment, they will give stand on how they treated you. What their conduct was to other Christians. They will have to give an account on why you were upset if you were upset rightfully. You will have to give an account if you got all upset and you hated that and there was no cause. I would hate to be a Christian at the at the judgment seat of Christ and lose. Well, he was so bad, he was so wicked, oh God, I couldn't stand him. But he gave you a paycheck faithfully, didn't he? Well, uh, oh, I, 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 I deserved that. I worked. Who gave you the ability to work at 40 hours? God did. God gave you the ability to work 40 hours. God gave your boss the ability to give you a 40-hour paycheck. And what did you do? You did like Israel. You griped and complained. How's that? One last place. I saved this one for last. I didn't have it for last, but I'm going to... I saved it for last. Second Peter 3, nine. This is another reason why God will not drop dead the lost, the wicked, at your will. This may be the reason why they're still living. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slack. God, why haven't you done it? Come on, God, do it now. God, answer my prayer now. Come on, God, answer my prayer now. But is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth him shall not perish, but that all should come to repent. You know why God didn't kill that wicked person? You know why that 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 evil, unjust person is still alive? So they would get saved. An opportunity to get saved. Maybe it's you that God says, I want you to go tell that wicked, rotten, terrible person about Jesus. I want you to give him a gospel tract. You know, I have... I, I was born in 1968. I was born again in 1987. And as far as I remember, I can go back, is every president in January, when they were in office, in our nation, starting with President Ronald Reagan, I sent them a gospel track. Now, when... They were re-elected twice, like Clinton and Bush. I think Bush I did twice. All right, people hated Obama. I sent Obama a gospel track twice. Never got a word. I sent a gospel track to Clinton, and he, you know, he didn't get in with a Clinton clan, you'd be dead. I got a reply from Clinton. I sent a gospel track to uh, Donald Trump. I never got a reply back. I sent a gospel track to President Biden. Everybody hates President Biden. Twice I tried to reach that guy. I sent an inauguration to him and just thought, you know, these things are going so sorrow, sorrow for him, so poorly for him. I sent him another gospel track. I never got a reply from him. I don't care if the world hates him. You know, in my prayer list, my I got here. I, I won't be able to find the page. But you know, one person I pray for today in my prayer list, I got a prayer book right here, and I got people's names. And I got two columns on each page. People I came across in the street ministry, people I came across in the grocery store, people in churches I've been in, people on Facebook, people who asked me to pray for him? I put their name down in the prison ministry. You know who I got in here included? I got Janet Poliski. Why? Because people hate her. 
You know another name I got in there? I think today. I, no, not the other day. Oprah Winfrey. She, she hates God. I pray for her. I got... Um, there's another one that, that these people hated. I can't think right now. I'll, I'll come across the name one day. Every Hopefully every day I open up to one page and I pray. I got names in that prayers. I know they're wicked. I know they're evil. I don't care they're Democrat, Republican. I got their names in there because God may answer my prayer and have them to be saved. I don't know. When they die, I give them, I give them a, a yellow highlight. I know one thing that President Biden's doing that Christians don't understand. As Donald Trump and as Obama, as Clinton go all the way back, they're setting the path for the Antichrist. I don't care if you're Republican president or Democrat president. They're setting the path for the, for the world leader called the Antichrist. Your boss may be setting the path for your paycheck. Your neighbors may be set for a path. I have no idea, but you know why God doesn't kill the wicked? Supply and demand. He's not He's not willing that any should perish. And you might be an answer to prayer to them like the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat. King of Israel never got saved, never got right. Still, can you imagine the king of Israel standing in the great white throne judgment and say, hey, listen, I sent you Jehoshaphat and, and you guys won that battle. Why couldn't you follow me? Why did you stay with Baal? <laughs> and mouth drop. You might be a testimony to the lost person. They might be a supply and demand for you to save. And then God's not willing that any should perish. That God loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. 